Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Christina McGarvey, and I am the Franchise Development Director here with Homewell. Um, today, you are in for a real treat because one of the top questions I always get asked as people go through their due diligence process evaluating Homewell is what is it like to be an owner day to day? And today we actually have two owners, uh, Eli and John Collier here from Nashville, Tennessee. And they're gonna take you through a little bit of what their days look like as a Homewell franchise owner. So go ahead guys, take it away. All right, well, hi everybody. Um, as, as Christina said, we're John and Eli Collier. Um, we're the owners here in Nashville area in Tennessee. Um, I was going to kind of kick us off and give a little bit of background about us. We've been doing this since January of 2020. Um, I came out of a healthcare background. I've got about 25 years in the industry. Eli has operations management experience is, um, is, is kind of her background. And so between us, we kind of felt like we covered all the bases when we started this business and, and, uh, so we're very excited to, to chat with you guys today, and I'll let Eli kind of talk a little bit about how we got started. It, it kind of started when uh, I got laid off from my position. Um, I've been with the company 17 years, and rather suddenly they decided that all the veterans needed to go. Um, so, you know, John suggested I look for a business to start, which is a great idea. And being the person that I am, I researched everything. So I looked at all different types of businesses, franchises. Uh, and when I found this type in-home care, uh, a light bulb went off in my head and I said, I, I can do this with John. So we can get John out of his corporate job and he can do this with me. So we started looking at numerous different in-home care companies and Homewell kept coming to the top. It was not very long at all before we decided that Homewell was the place we wanted to be. Uh, every time we spoke to someone during the discovery process and we had a question, they said, yes, we have a process for that. And yes, it's on the gateway. And, and that was the catchphrase because every time they said, yes, we have something for that. And, and it's been true, it's been proven to be true. Um, so that's kind of how we ended up here with Homewell. And it's definitely a decision we would make again every day. So I'm going to kind of start us talking about what a day in our life looks like. So one of the, one of the pillars of, of what we had to do to grow this business and what we have to do to keep growing um, is making sure that we're on top of the sales piece. This is really one of, one of my pieces that I oversee. Um, that said, I'm not a sales guy and, and that's not really my background. It's not a comfort zone for me. Um, but it's something that I have to oversee on a daily basis and make sure we're staying consistent. So our sales team, you know, it, it, in this business, it's not selling a product, right? It's out there building relationships with the right people, um, generating new referrals, um, and, and hopefully those end up being new clients. Um, one of the real key pieces and, and one of our success points is, is being really good at following up. So when you get that new lead, um, you've got to stay on top of it. You've got to you've got to contact them quickly. You've got to build a relationship out of thin air on the phone sometimes, um, and and that follow up, that consistency and persistence is what we're really good at. Um, in the referral side, this is one of those businesses where you don't go out and you get that spell on the you know the very first time. It's also about that same follow up. You've got to go six, seven, 10 times sometimes before you start seeing the, the work. And again, that's because it's such a relationship. Um, relative to that then, networking becomes very important. Um, being a part of the community, um, whether that's the chamber, whether it's you know one of the facilities local has an has a afternoon event and, and you go participate, but just getting your name out there, building trust, um, that's, that's really one of the keys. And so for me, I don't do the day-to-day -day sales. I don't like to go knock on the doors. Um, I've got a team that does that. Um, I try to provide them direction. Um, a lot of times I'm the one who, you know, kind of the industry knowledge, I try to be their subject matter expert. Um, and then hopefully they get those doors open and, and we get to go set something up where, where I can kind of be our, our voice of expertise. Um, and then power partnerships is really one of the biggest keys. So you want, you know, not 
20 or 30 different people that you're working with, but if you can go find those two, three, four people that you trade referrals with, that you've got strong relationships, um, they trust you. They know that you're going to provide good service for their clients, um, but you have that same trust relationship with them. And so sales is one of those pieces. It's never ending. Um, no two days look the same. Uh, many times I may be doing something on the very back end that's, you know, training related or research related about what new targets might be. Um, but some days I may be out in the field with one of my guys meeting with a facility. So it's a it's an essential part of the business. But, you know, in our case, Eli and I, neither one were the salespeople specifically. So it was something we had to bring somebody on that could do the front end of it. Um, but we do a really good job of staying consistent and, and getting out there and, and putting our name in the, in the light that we want it to be in. So um, I'm going to move us on, and uh, Eli's going to chat about one of the other parts of our day-to-day -day here. Well, one of the things that takes up a huge portion of what I do is recruiting. Recruiting is a full-time job. Uh, it's one, of, one side of the house is the way we think of it you have to constantly be recruiting. There, there may come a time where you think, I've got plenty of caregivers now, uh, I need to work on clients, I don't have anywhere for them to go, I'm gonna stop recruiting. This would be a bad idea. <laughs> you must constantly be recruiting. Um, it's In this business, these caregivers can work for multiple companies. They can tell you they're available, but they're not. They may pick up another job between the time you've talked to them you must constantly be bringing them in. Their schedules can change suddenly. Uh, you maybe need to be ready to staff a 24 seven client that comes in suddenly and you need seven, eight caregivers who can go to a certain area and have a certain schedule. And that requires usually keeping two and a half to three times the number of caregivers that you have clients. And so therefore constantly recruiting. Having someone who can orient those caregivers is key. How you bring them in, make your company stand out from those other companies, make them want to work for you. You've got to provide some kind of training for them. They'll tell you they know how to do everything, but they may not have worked with an Alzheimer's client. They may not have used a Hoyer lift. There's all kinds of training involved and that's ongoing and they want training. So you've got to have a program set up for them to continue to train. Mentoring, supervising, very important. Uh, you want to keep an eye on your caregivers. You need someone who can oversee what they're doing, pop in sometimes with the client, check on them, and then also just rewarding them. They want to know that they're doing a good job. Caregivers are people who do this job because it means something to them. They appreciate being recognized. They appreciate um, rewards, those kinds of things. So you have to stay engaged with them throughout the process. So it's not just putting your ads up somewhere and then saying, okay, great, come and orient with me, you've been hired. It's a whole process of how do you bring them in? How do you get them interested in your company? How do you keep them with you after that as well? Because the really good ones you want to keep. So definitely these four pillars here of recruiting, very key, and it is something we work on over and over and over, and we constantly try to improve our system because we need to communicate with the caregivers. There may be a new change. Uh, one thing about this business is it's never the same. So constantly improving that process, but recruiting full-time position. And I'm gonna let John talk us through a little bit about what it is that care management looks like. Once we've recruited those caregivers, then what do we do? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting because sales and, and then the recruiting piece, they're the ongoing. I mean, they are 24 seven, it is what we do. Um, I kind of look at, at the care management piece as this is the one that is what we really are. So all of those other things, they're happening in the background, they're happening all the time, they're how you grow your business, they're how you support your business. Um, but at the end of the day, what we actually do is take care of clients. Um, we're going in someone's home. Uh, they have a need, right? They have, they have something that they need help with. Um, we're the ones that let them, and, and, and these are some of my words that I use with families a lot of times, but our job is to keep them safe, happy, and healthy at their home, right? 
And so that's what we really are as a company. Um, our roles in this can, can really vary. Um, I do the vast majority of our initial assessments with clients. I think it's really important that they see kind of who we are as a company. Um, I think it's really important that they build a relationship with us as well as with the caregiver. Um, I think it's really important that we have good details ready to give our caregivers so that they know what they're walking into. Um, as a part of doing that, that, uh, that assessment, I think it's important that we build good expectations for our clients, that we help them understand how we're going to take care of them, the, the links that we'll go to to make sure that they're protected, um, that they have the coverage that they need, that they have somebody that they like and trust that's, that's there working in their home. And so from a care management perspective, those early steps are really important because they get us off on the right foot. Um, I can come in and, and, and talk with the family and or the client, um, make sure that they know what it is that they're looking for. Sometimes I have questions that lead them down a path that they may not have thought of. Um, I can make sure that we're doing a good job of getting the right fit for them and who their caregiver might be. Um, and, and then again, making sure that the caregiver is properly prepped for what it is that they need to do. And that's um, that's a big key piece of setting those expectations on all the sides. And so for us, taking care of that client being who we are, it starts from the very moment that we're in that home for the first time. Um, and, and, and that really is key to us providing the best service we can. And so on the front end, I'm out there and I'm meeting with the family and I'm getting that new business. Um, I'm making a lot of promises and, and I tell the families this. Um, once I hand you back over to the office, they're the ones who really make the magic happen, right? They're the ones who actually execute all the things that I said we can do. And I'm going to let Eli talk kind of a little bit about how we do that on the backside. So they get handed off to us. John's made them all these promises. We have to deliver on those. And that involves a lot of processes. So I will say processes is key to our side of the house. We have a team that handles the day to day. Uh, they're answering the phone, taking those calls from clients and caregivers. But as an owner, I'm overseeing all those, making sure that people are following the processes. Communication is a huge key word in our business, and we tell it to everyone. When we're communicating, everything works smoother. So we have to be on top of communicating with the caregivers as far as how do they get assignments? When are there changes with the clients? What needs do they have? The caregivers need to be communicating with us about how the client is doing, if the client is getting better or worse or needs something different so we can update a care plan. Um, and then we also have to be communicating with the clients. It's really key that we stay in touch with them. Um, it's not just, okay, we've brought you on and we're sending you a caregiver every week but we need to stay in touch with them and make sure that they're getting what they need, that their caregiver is a good fit. Um, any changes in their plan, um, things like that. So communicating is a constant process that we need to do with our clients as well as with the caregivers. One of the processes we have in place is how do we deal with when a caregiver doesn't show up or a caregiver is sick at the last minute being able to have a process in place that ensures that the client still receives the care that they need. These are human beings. We can't leave them without care. We, we explain to our caregivers, this is not folding t-shirts at the gap, right? It's not a messy t-shirt table that's left. This is a human who needs help. So we have to have a process in place that ensures that we're able to take care of them no matter what happens with staffing. So having all those processes in place and communicating between your team and having a way that your team is communicating with each other because you, know, you wanna know who has talked to who, but then communicating with the clients and the caregivers as well. All those processes is one of the things that we oversee as owners to make sure those are running smoothly on a daily basis. A little bit about what exactly does the owner do? <laughs> So this is always an interesting, right? Because in, in, in any business, and, and no matter how large, I came out of corporate healthcare, we had you know, thousands of employees all over the country, but things even in that environment are changing every day. When you're running a smaller shop, 
Um, changes can come at you really fast. And so the answer of, of what does the owner do can vary every day. Um, when Eli and I talk about this, the one thing we know is that the two of us are going to be here tomorrow, right? We know that we're going to continue running and growing and, and building this business. Um, but our environment can change every day. And so the owner does what the owner needs to do in a lot of cases. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about parts of the business that we really oversee as much as anything, that we provide the guidance and direction and, and management of those functions. Um, but some of the back end things that, that become a little bit more of what our daily tasks look like. So financial management's an interesting one. Um, obviously, you have to know what your numbers look like. You have to be able to make smart decisions based on, you know, where you stand financially, what you're bringing in, what you're putting out. Um, that is an ongoing challenge. For us, um, it's really a two-piece challenge. So Eli is our, she's our detail person. She's the one that's actually in all the numbers. Um, she's doing the report. She's you know, she's crunching the numbers and, and giving us our reality check about where are we today. Uh, but this is a piece that she and I do together because I am a little bit more the strategy piece. Um, so here's where we are. What do we do with that? Does that mean more profit? Does that mean more, you know, um, reinvesting in the business? Does that, you know, what does that mean? Where are we at? Um, and, and so in a lot of things, I think it's important to, to think about the idea that you need to have the right kind of team around you as an owner. Um, Eli and I bring a couple of different skill sets, uh, very opposite skill sets in a lot of ways, but we function very well together. Um, we've chosen to call me kind of the CEO role um, because kind of the leadership strategy, team building, um, vision, big picture, those are the things that I do really well. The problem with only having that skill set is I may talk about doing all those things really well and then not ever really execute that well. Um, Eli, we've chosen to kind of call her the COO because um, she's the one that makes everything happen on the back end, right? And so Eli may get caught up in the details and not necessarily see the forest for the trees, right? But with the two of us together, we're able to kind of cover all of those pieces. Um, your mix is going to be very different than that, right? But I think one of the strong things as an owner um, is to make sure you're, you're very aware of your own skill sets, what you can and can't do well, and then you put good people around you to help with that. Um, you know, to be very specific, I think one of the things I particularly do as an owner is that big picture, right? I need to be spending time on a daily basis thinking about where is my business? Where are we going? How are things now? Um, but where do they need to be tomorrow and, and two years from now, three years from now, five years from now? Um, one of the things I think is very important and, and it, 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 it kind of ties into the team building concept. Um, you don't just build a team, right? You've got to build the right team. It starts with that piece. You know, the back end and what everybody thinks of as team building, the, the rah-rah part of it, the building the culture, you know, that really has to come next. You, you have to put the right people in place. Um, one of the things that I recommend to people, I, I, I feel very strongly about this, is when somebody on your team leaves, when you have turnover, you don't just kind of go back and do the same thing, right? You just don't hire a replacement. Evaluate where your business is. Think about, you know, have your needs changed? Our structure today in the team that we have is almost completely different than what it was day one because our business has grown and we needed new things. Um, you know, marketing, we, we talked about the sales piece of that. Uh, marketing's even bigger, right? It's, it's social media, it's your internet presence, it's your, you know, your networking. Um, we found, I mean, we've, we've gotten actual clients out of wearing our little Homewell t-shirts around, or not t-shirts, but, you know, we've got polos and, and our pullovers and different things, and we've had people say, hey, we're looking for somebody to help my mom. Yep. Right. And so that's what marketing is. Right. It's it's the whole reputation management thing. It's the whole presence. Um, it's it's building your brand. You know, reputation management, I think, is is 
pe people go one way with it. I think the most important part of it is to just do what you say. Um, we've grown our business so much because people tell other people, these guys do it different. These guys do it better. You need to talk to home well. And so I think, you know, as an owner, um, I, I can't give you what my tomorrow looks like necessarily, right? Our, our job is to run this whole business. And so as an owner, we do what we have to do. But if we get caught up in those weeds, if we allow ourselves to get too granular in what we're doing, then we stop running the business. And so at the end of the day, that, that ability to step back and see the big picture and manage, uh, I think is, is a real key to your success. Culture is a big key to that. Um, culture is something you start from day one. It's easy to think I don't have a culture when it's just you starting out and you're running your business, but you're absolutely setting your culture from the beginning and you need to sit down and think about what you really want it to be. Um, we're a family owned business. We, uh, we take pride in that. We share that as part of our culture. Um, when we hire people, we even put in our ads, you must be someone we like because we're gonna be around you every day. Um, we want our office to have a great culture, have fun, make sure we're getting everything done. But what does that culture look like? Because it comes through in everything that you do and making sure that everyone is on board with your culture, presenting the same care when you're on the phone, when you're on person, when you're taking care of an issue or when you're going above and beyond. All those things wrap up into what makes your culture. And that's something that as an owner, we set that. And it's something we have to keep managing. Um, and again, I will say the same thing. The day in the life doesn't look the same every day. There are times you have to step in when someone is out sick or you lose a team member. So you, you step into all these different places to fill in until you get it staffed again. Um, but you really want to keep working your way back into running the processes, not so much the day-to-day -day details. And that takes time. It's not something you do from day one. You get there over time. But thinking about how you run your team, what, what your attitude is, how you present that in every single interaction with your clients and with your caregivers who are in some ways like a client, how you treat them, how you interact with them matters. And that reputation brings you more of what you put out. So keeping that in mind. Definitely not the same day every day, which actually makes it a lot of fun. Uh, we never get bored here. There's always something to take care of, something we can do better, something more exciting we find that we want to integrate into our systems. Um, so different day every day, but a day that we would pick over and over again. One thing we have said this entire process is we made the right choice. We have never wavered on that. Even when the days are hard, we absolutely made the right choice and this is where we want to be. So day in the life of a home wall owner, exciting and new and fun. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, that gave a really detailed look at what the day is and a very honest one. There's so many key takeaways that I had from that. So I really appreciate it. I hope everybody that was in attendance um, had some key takeaways just like I did. If you have questions, please refer back to your franchise development um, consultant and we would be happy to answer anything you have. Again, thank you for taking the time out of your business to do this for us and we will talk to everyone soon. Bye guys.